Good morning everyone, this is Keelan Anderson and welcome back to my channel, Poor Special Events. We talk about all things mobile business, especially mobile bartending. Um, I saw a comment on my channel from someone asking about how uh, some of their clients had signed contracts with venues and the venue owners were stating that their bartending service needed to have a liquor license or else they would not be permitted to work on the property. So. First, there's a lot of different legal things that we need to talk about with that, um, and every situation is going to look a little bit different, but here are some of the things that have come up in the past and some of the education that I've been able to share with some venue owners who had a similar question. So let's get into it. So there's a couple pieces that we need to talk about. One is that most venues or um, potential clients of yours will assume that you need to have a full liquor license to come in and bartend. That is not true. Okay. I operate as BYOB because in the state of Pennsylvania, you cannot sell or furnish alcohol to someone in a public space unless you have a liquor license. That is 100% true. Now, when you're having a private event with your friends and your family and no alcohol is being sold at all, there are no tickets to get in. You don't have to pay a fee to get in. There's not a donation. When nothing is being sold, you can freely give to your friends and family at your private event whatever you want. So in this case, a wedding at a private venue to which you've paid to rent that space, you can freely give out that alcohol. You have to pay for it yourself. There can be no cost associated with it. So that's that's number one. Now, then comes in, but we need a responsible server. We can't just let anybody serve themselves. Correct. So you can hire a mobile bartender like me, myself, who is in the state of Pennsylvania, it's ramp certified. In other states, it's called like ABC certification. Um, there's different names for it based on the state you're in. You go and get your ramp certification. Basically, it talks to you about the laws and the consequences of over serving people, understanding what proper servings of alcohol are based on the different kinds of alcohol, whether it's wine, beer, liquor, things like that. Um, it's sometimes called a server seller training or responsible server training. And those trainings uh, typically take like two and a half hours, I believe. There are a ton of active participation parts to it. So you physically have to be in there answering questions as you go, um, quizzes after each module. But that certification is usually good for two years. In the state of Pennsylvania, I know that it's two years. So you'll get that certification. Then you can go on and look for business insurance. So I typically work with uh, FLIP or there's Canopy. Um, I've heard some good things about Next. I'm not sure what the, what all they offer, um, but you can go in and you can look for liability insurance and general liability insurance, catering insurance. Um, now, liquor liability is something that for myself, I cannot get liquor liability because they only offer you a liquor liability policy if you are a liquor um, permit holder. So I can't get a full liquor liability policy without being a liquor permit holder. But my clients who are hosting a private party, I will bring in the general liability, I will bring in the catering insurance, I will have all the ramp certifications, and then my client can go get their event insurance policy, which is usually always needed per the event venue, with something like wedsafe.com, who does weddings and private events. They can go and they can get that policy, they can check, or, check off extra liquor liability at no extra charge, and that covers that gap in between as well. So. Sometimes it's just the education that the venues don't have and they just want to be protected and that's fine and that's totally understandable. Um, most venues don't even know where a good place to get uh, event insurance comes from. So I usually share with them, hey, look up wedsafe.com. Most local event, uh, most local insurance companies will try and offer you some kind of a package like the people who do your homeowners or your car insurance. Usually they say it's like for a year, it's a super high amount of money and you only need it for a weekend or a day. Um, so I try and stay away from that. I try and go for people that are in the event space because that's a huge difference. So basically just take some education about saying, Hey, I am BYOB. I can't get a liquor li uh, liability policy because I don't have a permit to sell alcohol. I don't have a brick and mortar establishment that sells alcohol. I don't sell alcohol. I'm a responsible server. I have responsible serving certificates. I have general liability for my business. I have catering liability for my business. And your, your um, client is going to get extra liability protections through their event insurance policy that covers your building as well. And they say, oh, okay, cool. 
I've had this conversation with so many venues so many times. It comes up all the time and it's okay. It's a totally normal conversation to have. It's a really good question to ask because so many people worry about it. Um, we've always operated that way. We've always communicated. So that's one of my big things. When you're gonna work with a new venue or you want to reach out to a new venue, I always start off by saying, hey, here is my service, here is what we provide, here are our ramp certifications, here's proof of our insurance, here's how this all works. And I also add some value by saying, when you have someone that comes to you that wants to book with you, a new client, you can direct them to this website to get their event insurance policy to make sure that your venue is covered. And they're always like, awesome, okay. So providing that value, sharing those resources, being up from, from the beginning, sharing everything that you have. Another thing you can do with your event insurance policy or your, your liability insurance policy, so you can name additional insureds. So at the beginning of every year, for me, it's actually August, um, when I go in to re-up my insurance, I go in and I add all of our venues that we work with on a regular basis so that I have a proof of insurance for their venue. And then I send that out to them every year. So I say, hey, I just re-upped my insurance. Here you go, you're on as my additional insured. Again, here's a reminder of all of our ramp certifications for any of the bartenders that could pot potentially be working at your venue. We have everything to ready to go here. We hope to work with you soon. If you have any clients coming up that might need services, we would love to, to have a conversation with them. Being ahead of the game, referring, um, being your, your biggest advocate, right? No one should be talking about your business more than you. I know that's hard at first because you don't want to feel like you're being the salesperson, but sometimes people don't work with you just because they don't understand the value that you're bringing. Once they know the value that you're bringing, they're like, oh yeah, we need you. We, we need you here all the time. And once you can show that value to those owners and you do a few events with them and they trust um, your work ethic and they know you're there and you care about their, their place, their venue, which sometimes doubles as their home too if it's something on their property, they're going to want you there all the time because it's peace of mind that everything's going to run smoothly and it's another good qualified person who cares about their place. And that's huge. That is huge. Getting on those preferred vendor lists is huge for your business, for reoccurring business. Okay. It's big. So just wanted to jump on here. Wanted to talk about the difference between liquor licenses and insurances and liabilities and all of that stuff. Obviously, this is not legal advice. You can contact your lawyer if you feel the need to, but here are some of the things in my experience that we've been through and how we've navigated them to continue to serve our clients at these different venues because new venues are popping up every day and you want to make those connections right away. You want to get on those preferred vendor lists. You want to provide that value and you want to get those customers coming in in that reoccurring venue. Have a great day, guys. Thanks so much.